Well, this is part two in my series of um, sharings of some of the lessons I've learned personally from Father James Flanagan, the founder of the Society of Our Lady of the Trinity. And this lesson came about in a rather ironic manner. There was a man who, when I had mentioned to him that I was, um, you know, close to Father James Flanagan and was sort of one of the people that he had mentored, uh, he actually said, a negative word about Father Flanagan. It wasn't anything specific about Father Flanagan, but, and it wasn't anything really serious, but it was the first time I encountered someone who would say something negative about someone that I truly admired and loved. And later on, I was with Father Flanagan, and we were in Rome walking along the Via Aurelia, and I said, boy, Father Jim, uh, I was with someone in another place in, in uh, Massachusetts, and, and uh, they didn't like you. They, they said a negative word about you. And I was like, wow, I couldn't believe it. And I couldn't believe it also because, you know, Father Jim had been a veteran of World War II and, you know, a, a priest and a founder of a religious community and, and someone who was worthy of great respect. And that was really shocking to me. Anyway, I told Father Flanagan that, you know, someone, you know, kind of insulted you. And I, I don't understand why that would happen. And, and uh, Father Flanagan said something that has been with me ever since, something that I was really amazed, he said. He said to me in reply, as we were walking along the Via Aurelia, he said, Well, I just hope we're all living in a way pleasing to God, pleasing to our Father. I just hope we're all living in a way pleasing to our Heavenly Father. That's all he said. And that stuck with me because when someone says a negative word about us, our first reaction is, we might say, Well, who said this? And what did they say? And, you know, who did they say it to? What was the context? And, and why did they say what they said? And then we want to try to defend ourselves and fight back and say, no, this person is wrong. And, you know, they have some agenda and they're saying this and they're saying that. And that wasn't Father Flanagan's response. His response was, well, I just hope we're all living in a way pleasing to God. And I felt like he was giving me a lesson. You know, because... If you look at, for example, the apostles, they start doing tremendous works for the Lord and His people, and they get attacked. And people tell them, stop doing what you're doing. We don't like what you're doing. And St. Peter says, judge for yourself. Should we, should we obey God or should we obey men? And St. Paul says in one of his other letters, everything you do, do it for the Lord rather than for men. And it seems that in every sphere of human activity, and it doesn't have to be a religious activity. For example, this isn't just about being a priest or religious or you know, a spiritual leader. You could be a doctor or a lawyer or a politician or a judge or you know, a mechanic or a teacher, you know, in the military, a policeman or in construction, whatever sphere of human activity you're in. If you are doing the right thing, if you are honest and humble, if you, for you, if you are caring for other people, if you right is right and wrong is wrong and you don't mix the two, if you aim high in everything you do, you try to better yourself every day, then at some point, people are going to attack you. They're going to say negative things about you. They probably won't have any faults they know about you, but they start to tear you down. It seems like that's a law of human nature, but it's actually not a law of human nature. It's a law of broken human nature. And... When we're in that situation, we're trying to do great work in our sphere of activity, when we're trying to do what's good, true, and beautiful, and loving, and, you know, holy, then others try to tear us down, they might get jealous of us, then we kind of like, we don't like that. So it's almost like we either want to fight back, or we want to bow down to them and say, okay, I'll come down to your level of mediocrity, or your level of infidelity, or corruption, or whatever it is, in order that you won't ridicule me anymore. And Father Flanagan's teaching and his response was like, you have to ignore all that and just make sure you're living in a way pleasing to God. Now, if people are criticizing us for our sins, then that's when we got to pay attention. We say, okay, this is a wake-up call. I have to change my course. Um, but if they're criticizing us for doing what's true and good, then we have to ignore it. And we have to continue to please God and not men. And that's a real simple lesson, you know, because you have no idea, you know, at some point in your life someone can start to attack you and say negative things about you and, 
you know, manifest that they don't like you. And it's simply because you've risen high. You've worked hard to do what's true and good and beautiful and great for everybody around you and pleasing to God. Don't pay attention to the criticisms. You pay attention to the will of the Lord. Seek to live always in a way pleasing to God. If you are living a holy life in a state of grace, you're avoiding sin, you're helping others to do the same. If you're leading others to, you know, experience goodness in their own lives, if you're helping others in their journey, keep doing that. Don't pay any attention to the attacks against you. You just seek to, you seek to live in a way pleasing to God, and that will be the best thing to do.